Afternoon, everyone. My name is Paul, and I am a nerd, and you are not. Well, maybe you are, but we are we are the group of nerds that are here today to help you understand a little bit more about Practice Master. You are lucky enough to be attending the January 2015 Practice Master Virtual User Group Meeting from Attorney Computer Systems. I had to take a breath. Couldn't get it all in in one breath. And today we are talking about, um, what are we talking about? In activity report, Mary Jo is going to continue her her attempt to cover every report and, and every program. So today in the Practice Master Virtual User Group meeting, she will talk about the inactivity report. And I'm going to talk about one of my favorite new features in version 17, Quick Views and Smart Tabs. But before we get there, we're going to do a little bit of housekeeping. Um, by Oops, I pressed that wrong button. Oh, everything's just gone away. It's, it's gone to heck in a handbasket. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I am going to tell you about this. This is the GoToWebinar control panel. If you are seeing this, oh, stop laughing, Mary Jo. If you are seeing this, then that is because you have not clicked this little button that looks like an arrow pointing to the right. Because had you clicked that button, this would have flown off the right side of your screen, and you would no longer be seeing it. When you do that, uh, this turns into an arrow that points to the left, which allows you to bring it back. Why would you want to get rid of it? Well, it's probably covering up my screen, and you really want to see absolutely everything we have to show you today, so you want to make sure to get it out of the way. Why would you want to bring it back? Well, maybe you're shy and you have a question. And if that's the case, you can type your question here, hit the send button, and Leanne, our humble and south of the border moderator, not just her, me and Mary Jo, we went to eat Mexican food today too. We will all, uh, well, we won't go there. Leanne, our humble moderator, will recognize that you have a question. She will interrupt Mary Jo or myself at the opportune time. She will ask your question on your behalf. Now, I want to I want to emphasize the fact that uh, I don't always understand what I'm talking about. Well, I, I try to, but more importantly, sometimes I don't understand the question. Uh, not quite so much with Mary Jo, but both of us may be answering the wrong question. We may go off on a tangent that's not answering a question, or you may just have a follow-up question. Keep typing them here. Keep remembering to hit send. Leanne will keep interrupting us at the opportune time, and we will be sure to get your question answered. Now, if that sounds like a little too much typing for you, you might want to just hit this little button that looks like a hand with an arrow pointing upward in front of it. That means raise your hand. Uh, same thing will happen. Leanne will recognize you have a question. She will interrupt Mary Jo or myself at the opportune time, but then she will unmute your microphone. So we are entering, at that point, the no Frito, no Dorito zone, and you will need to be quiet while we answer your question, but you are involved with us at that point in a two-way conversational manner, meaning that you can interrupt us and say, well, I meant this, or you can interrupt us and say, well, what about this? And when we're done answering your question, Leanne will mute you back up, and you then enter a uh, a Dorito and Frito enabled zone and you continue eating lunch. Now, with that said, what are we talking about? We're talking about the, oh, we know that. I already said that, didn't I? <laughs> I should cross these things off as I go. Um, I do want to tell you, and I'm going to make a point from now forward until we get to June or July, that version 15 is being sunsetted. If you have version 15, you need to upgrade before it's sunsetted. Um, now, if you're not on maintenance, we can tell you how to do that. If you're on maintenance, really, it's just a matter of upgrading your software. It's free. You've already got it, or you can get it. Um, so do it. Why do you want to do that? Well, well, first off, how do you tell? Click on Help, the word Help, up in your menu, in any STI program. Click on About, and it'll tell you what version you're on. If you're on version 15, uh, 15 anything, 15.1, 15.2, I think there might have even been 15.3, I'm trying to remember. Um, if you're on any 15 version, you will want to get updated. Why? Well, you won't be able to get support anymore. You may have to pay from that point forward. At some point, you'll have to pay to upgrade your data when you do finally decide to upgrade, because STI will have to do that update for you. No longer will the uh, facility be built into the software to upgrade from uh, something that's as old as version 15. Uh, and we may need, if you if you say, well, I call attorney computer systems and, and they help me. I don't need support from STI. Well, we do sometimes. 
Sometimes you'll ask us a question, we'll need to research it on your behalf, and if you're not on maintenance, we can't get that support from STI. So enough about that for now. Uh, just remember, it's, it's time to update if you're on version 15. And so without any further ado, I'm going to press the magic buttons, first this one, then this one, then here we are in Practice Master, and Mary Jo is going to tell you about the inactivity report. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I think Paul has an awful lot of baskets with a lot of heck in them. <laughs> we're going around here. Anyway, we're going to talk about the inactivity report in Practice Master. And if you are joining us in our TAPS 3 meeting prior to this one, we talked about the inactivity report in TABS because they are in both programs, but they show different things. So let's look at the one in Practice Master. So we're going to go out to our reports. And it is right out here on our main screen, unless you've customized the screen, but it should be right here. So our client inactivity report. And when I click on this report, it is the only report, or one of the only reports in Practice Master that actually looks a little bit like tabs. You still have these same parameters here like we do in tabs that we can say whether or not um, the, you know, what client ID we want to specify, um, all of those things. So this is the only, um, or like I said, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's the only, but there might be another that's similar, but one of the only reports that has that same capability in Practice Master couple of things to look at here. When we're talking about inactivity, we are talking about clients that are usually active. And we want to know the last time something happened on them. Um, we don't want cases to fall through the cracks. That is the whole idea of an inactivity report. We want to find out when was, uh, how long has it been since, um, you know, something happened on this case. So a fee was put in, a statement was run, um, a journal note was uh, handled, a, a calendar entry was entered for this matter. And we, want it, we don't want those to fall in. So maybe in the last three months, I want to know if anybody has had any activity or no activity on that um, for those situations. So normally, we are talking about inactive cases, so or active cases, I'm sorry. This specific status right here, if I select the status, I have some choices here. And again, most of the time, I do just want to see my active cases that I have not touched in a while. But there might be a couple of times where you do want to see the inactive or both. So that's available here. And then you have task-based or non-task-based if you want to split it out further. The other thing that is automatically defaulting is our open-close dates. So if we select the date here, it's saying it's assuming that I want the open date for it doesn't matter. I want it to be open. But I do want to include any clients without a close date. So you can play with this as well. You might only want to see the active cases in the last year that were opened in the last year that you have not worked on in three months, something like that. You can, you can control that here. We also can control which timekeepers we're looking at and which clients. In the Options tab, we've got a little bit more criteria to select from here in Practice Master than we did in our tabs report. Now you have to understand our, we are in um, sample data, so our dates are going to be all Screwy. They're all going to be weird. Um, this thinks our system date is November of 2014. So let's disregard the dates here for uh, the system purposes. But let's look at the activity. We can say no activity in the last 90 days in these areas. And we can pick and choose. We can say we just want to see if there has been any clients or matters out there that has not had any calendar entries put in in the last 90 days, or any fee entries that have not been put in for the last 90 days. Any of these areas, we can say one, all, none. It just depends on what you're looking for. We can also do this uh, by area of practice and additional common client files. We can search through all of these different areas and say, did we put in any journal notes or has there been any emails uh, journaled on this particular matter or any matter or whatever you want here? We have days increments here that we can do. or. If you do the drop down, you can do weeks, months, or years. And again, you can put any numeric number here and then search those things here. We can decide whether or not this is going to be printed in portrait or landscape. And we can also print our criteria page. And a criteria page is just a page that's going to print out that tells you everything that you selected for that particular run of the report. So it's helpful if you want to rerun this again later and you have not saved that parameter. Let's look at the sort. We've got a couple of different options in here that we can do. Two sorts, a primary and a secondary. This one right now, we're doing it by primary attorney. We could do it by client ID alphabetically. We could do it by secondary originating, by category, by area of practice. And again, over here, uh, for the secondary, I'm going to just say the last activity date for my second 
secondary. You also can decide to set the, um, start each new sort on a new page. Uh, for my example, I'm not, because I don't have that many in my sample data, and I just want to all print it on one page. But if you were going to run this report to hand out to your primary attorneys, you could select this box and let this print out an individual page, or let it start on a new page for each timekeeper. I'm going to just run this, and let's see what we get. I'm going to say OK, and I'll preview it. And this is going to tell me that Kelly White has not had any activity since her case was opened on 10-6. Now, again, this is sample data. And this is within the last 90 days. Now, if I had um, different criteria set, I may get a whole different set of results for different timekeepers and different things. Um, so it just depends on what you choose out here on your options as to what's going to show up. So lots of different ways, lots of different information that you can get out of here. But this will help you so that you don't um, have those matters slip through the cracks and you're not getting them. So, yep. Paul. Is it my turn? It's your turn. OK. Well, I'm going to talk about quick views and smart tabs. And Mary Jo's making noises at me. No, it, I got my keyboard back lost my keyboard in the last virtual user group meeting, but I've got it back. So what is a quick view? Let's go into the client file, and I'll show you. This is a quick view right here. For instance, if I wanted to see Pam's clients, I have a quick view set up that shows me just Pam's clients. I can click on it, and I am seeing Pam's clients because that's the filter that's being used. If we were to scroll down here, we'd see that's the filter that's being used. And we are sorting it a certain way, and we have the certain column layout. Those three things can help you determine what you're seeing in your list. So when you have a list any place, it could be in the calendar file, a list of calendar items, in the client file, the list of clients, uh, in the journal file, the list of journal entries, you have the ability to set up a quick view. Now, you've always had the ability to, to narrow things down and sort them and order them this way. For instance, if I had just clicked on the filter for Pam's clients and then clicked on the appropriate column layout and then clicked on the appropriate sort by, then I would be looking at that information there. But what a quick view does is it takes all of that stuff that you used to have to be kind of a nerdy power user to even understand what it all was and brings it right out here. So that when I come into the client screen, this is the way it looks when I come into the client list just from scratch. Here's all my clients, but I can click on this quick view, and it will order it the way I want, only show me the records I want, and only show me the columns that I've decided I want to see based on my column layout. Very cool. How do you do one of these? Well, they're actually very simple. If we go into Manage Quick Views, we'll see that the PAMS Clients Quick View all you do is you give it a name. You can decide whether you're going to show it for all users or whether it's something that's just for you. So if you're a system administrator or somebody who manages Practice Master for your firm, you can set up quick views that everybody sees. What filter are we using? We already talked about the fact that it's the PAMS clients filter. What column layout do we like for that view? How do we want it sorted? And is it going forward or backwards? Now, we also then can decide if we're going to show it as a quick view tab. This one didn't have custom colors, but it is a quick view tab. And just so you can see, I can change the colors. Let's change it to pink and black writing. And now when I save it, that, well, when I come back here, oh, i got to close this. Thank you, Mary Jo. Now we got it. Now Pam's clients is a pink color. You'll also notice that this pink extends all the way across here. So selecting a certain color makes it easy to determine which quick view you're looking at because the color of the tab will also extend down to the very top of the column headings. I kind of like that. Now, that's a very simple quick view. There are more sophisticated ones. For instance, we have them here by area of practice. And they have something we call smart tabs. We have the same thing if we look by category or by attorney. By location, in our sample data, I think we have LA, Lincoln, and Omaha. Wow, this is a multi-city firm. So if we go back to, let's say, by area of practice, what we're getting down here are smart tabs. And these are the different areas of practice. 
And when we click on one, it shows us all the matters in that particular area of practice. Another very common way to use this is by attorney, or I, frequently I'll see this set up as by primary, by originating, because what we're looking at here is the primary timekeeper. So here's timekeeper number one's matters. Here's timekeeper number two's matters, number three's, number five's. It's important to know that this works in conjunction with, let me move my go to meeting thing out of the way, in conjunction with this. So I can narrow it to active only clients or to also show inactive clients by showing all clients. And I will still be able to narrow down by my quick views. Now, how do we define a smart tab? Well, it's not much different. If we go into quick views and look at the by attorney one, the only addition thing, additional thing is that we tell it we want to show smart tabs by and then we select. Now, this is the tricky part. Only indexes that have been created in file maintenance will show up here. You have to have an indexed field in order to use this. And it gets even a little trickier. I'm not going to go into much detail except to say that if you are using a, a quick view within a client record, like on the calendar or the note or the email or the journal screen, you have to have uh, a two different types of, of indexes set up, one by client number and, and then by the thing that you're breaking down your smart tabs by. And then you also have to have one set up just by that whatever thing you're breaking down the smart tab. So I won't go into too much detail about how you create those indexes, because if you know how to do indexes, you know how to do indexes. And it's not something that a normal user would do. But if you have an index set up, you can break down the things in your quick view further by what we call smart tabs. Very, very cool. Now, if I look down here, you can also use these quick views by just clicking here. So it doesn't have to be a smart tab that shows up up here. I could have a quick view that where I didn't say show has smart tab and just define some colors for it. And I could still click on it here. I don't think I have any that aren't being shown out here as smart tabs because to me, the real beauty of these quick views is the fact that they can be smart tabs because that really brings these sorts of things right out to the surface. Somebody, let me just start from scratch here. Somebody comes into Practice Master, they go into the client file. They don't have to even look at their quick clicks. They don't even have to have it open because they can get to maybe their matters, maybe by area of practice. They're looking specifically for that family law case. Oh, there it is. That's why I like quick views, and that's why I like smart tabs. Now let's look at some that are internal here, internal to the, to the record. For instance, I can have quick views on any list. Remember I said not just on the client list, but anything that you click on that gives you a list. So I can have quick views by note. I can have phone and email only, by type, by my journal. These would be things that I had journaled. I don't, obviously don't have any journal records for this particular matter. By calendar, I can look at, you know, by user. We only have one user here, Kendra. Let's see, uh, find somebody that's got more calendar items. Oops, I'm at the end of the file. Let's go backwards. Um, oh, thank you. I'm in the wrong, I'm doing the wrong thing. I need to, let me, let me find somebody. Oh, I'm only one family law client. Um, Back here, let's see if I can find somebody with multiple calendars. Is that good enough? Can I get more? Can I find more? Can I? No, I can't. So I'm going to go back to this one. So here, oh, no, actually what I'm getting is by user, and I'm looking at Ron, I'm looking at Jen, I'm looking at all. Here's the past due ones. It even tells you how what date they're past due from. Here's the by user. Anytime you have smart tabs, you have the ability to look at all or break down by whatever the smart tabs are. Anytime you have quick views, your leftmost is going to show all the records without uh, breaking it down by a quick view. And that is the nickel tour of quick views and smart tabs. Uh, very useful to bring your data out to the surface. A lot of neat things you can do infrastructure-wise here. You could say, 
I want to, you could build a filter that says, show me all, uh, all records with a statute date that runs in 90 days. And then you could have a quick view that in the client file that says statute running. And it could sort by statute date in uh, ascending order. And, and, and very easily help you to manage that without somebody having to run a report, having to run a filter, having to understand anything about that. They just click on the SOL do or whatever you want to call that tab. I love calling statute of limitations SOL because it's so appropriate. So there you have it. Quick views, smart tabs. What are we talking about next month? We are talking about calendar properties, how you make your calendar look a certain way or not look a certain way or what those properties mean and how they affect you. Um, Mary Jo is going to talk about that. How do I know? Because I'm talking about the task list. The next item for next month is the task list. If you know me, you know that I am driven by my tasks. I love to organize things in my task list. So I'm going to tell you all about that and how I do it and what it means and what the difference is between tasks and events and all those fun things. One more reminder, if you have version 15, now is your chance to update. It's going to go off maintenance into a sunsetted state. Uh, come June or July of this year. I do want to point out that we have a newly redesigned website. If you go to attorneycomputersystems.com, I emphasize systems, attorneycomputersystems.com. Here's our new website. We have a search box if we want to search for emailing statements. Uh, we can type email, and as we're typing, it'll pop up the results, or we can go ahead and click on the search button and get to a list of all the videos that have information on emailing statements um, or email. I guess I didn't accept the statements part. We have under videos all the live events, the tabs, Practice Master and World Docs Virtual User Groups, plus our Coffee Pot webinars. We also have our non-live events. These are the things that Mary Jo and I tape, uh, but that aren't done before a live studio audience. They, they, we use the laugh track for those. Um, Mary Jo has her eBytes video series where she takes very uh, succinct topics and, 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 and has a very quick tip about a certain specific thing within one of the three programs. We record three of those a month. And we have the Paul and Mary Jo show, which is more of a TV show format, a talk show format, where Mary Jo and I talk about something, and then one of us goes back to the computer and shows it to you. If you go to our virtual user group meeting page, you will find information on how to register for the next event. The next Practice Master Virtual User Group meeting is February 23rd. And as I said, it's about uh, calendar properties and the task list. You will see, as you scroll down, recorded versions of the prior events. And for the one that we're in right now, since we haven't even uploaded it for our video producer to do, it is currently in post-production. So you'll be able to find all the content that we've ever recorded and also sign up for our live events by going to videos, the appropriate virtual user group meeting, or the Coffee Pot webinar section, reading about what the next event is, clicking on this link, and signing up. And you can also see all the recorded versions simply by scrolling down. Everybody have a good rest of the day, rest of the week, and of course, rest of the month, because we will see you next month on February 23rd when we talk about calendar properties and task lists. Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>